Hi there. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a Google Apps script. First, we're going to go to our drive, select New, More. And if you don't already have a Google Apps script app here, go to Connect More Apps. And we're going to search for Google Apps Scripts. Your first option will be the app right there. So go ahead and load that. And then open up a new file. We're going to title our file My Library. Save that. And while it's doing that, let's create a new function called Add Numbers. Uh, and we're going to have this return. Oh, first let's add an argument here. Number. A number plus five. Save it. And, and before we can actually make this a library, we have to do a couple things. First is we have to share. Uh, set the sharing so anyone can view. There we go. And we need to create a new version. So file, manage versions, save. You can add a description here if you want. Version, we'll save it. Do that, and then we need to get the script ID. You can either get that from the URL uh, from the address bar at the top or by going to File, Project Properties, and select the script ID. All right, uh, now let's go somewhere and test this out. So I already used a spreadsheet here that I have opened and I have saved a new script so we don't have to watch it save. Uh, and now let's add a library to it. So go to resources, libraries. Oh, and I already have an old library there. So you can actually add several libraries. Does that just have to be one? We will copy and paste our library ID there. Hit add. Um, and it looks like it's still saying untitled project, but that's okay. Because it'll still give the information we need. Call this oh, and you'll see there my first version. So we call it. All right, a uh, couple things here. So you have to select a version, um, and there's also and you have to select the identifier. So this is how we're going to call it. This is how we're going to use this function in our script. Uh, the development mode. If you're going to use this library on your own projects and a lot of your own stuff, it's a lot easier to keep the development mode on. And what that means is when you update your library. You don't have to come in here and select a new version. Otherwise, every time you update, you'll have to um, come into each project, each script that you have, uh, and manually update it. But development mode on prevents us from having to do that. So let's save it like that. And now we can call it using identifier lib. We'll see add numbers. And it autofills for us. Let's go ahead. Put a number in there, and this is going to have to. We want to be able to see our results, so let's log, and then we'll save and run I'm using Control S and Control R to run, and Control Enter will give us our log. So as you can see, five. And we had five here, so five and five is ten. It's working. Awesome. All right, a couple more things we may want to do here. So that's that's a library. That's it. You're basically done. Now I'll show you a couple other things. Um, let's say you have a lot of functions. Uh, this autofill can get really cumbersome if you're looking at a bunch of functions, especially if you don't use them. You might have helper functions. So let's look at a helper function. Numbers. And here we're going to return a number. Well, let's just return, we'll take the static number. We'll return 100. Uh, and in order to make this private so it doesn't show up on the list, uh, on our autofill, is we have to add an underscore to the end of the name, to the end of the function name. So let's go here. We're going to add our 100 now. Oh, and let's not forget parentheses. Save it. 
come back to our script here. Uh, and because we have development mode on, we can just call it. However, I don't think it will autofill for us unless we're on the correct version. So let's go ahead. Uh, well, that's okay because it, it shouldn't autofill that one. Um, but now just run it again. It should be good. And enter. And you'll see we have 110 now. So it works perfect. Uh, lastly here, let's show, so that, those are capabilities just within the script itself. But something interesting about the libraries, uh, is you can basically treat this just like a, a built-in script. Um, as though it's just connected directly to your spreadsheet. So we can add values directly to spreadsheets. So for example, let's do, Sheet app range call one and I'll set a value to hello world. All right, and again, because we have development mode on, uh, we should be able to access this, but I do want this to autofill. That's not a private function. So let's go ahead. Manage versions, new functionality. Ah, no. Okay, well, it's not spelled right, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, saved it. Now let's come back here. We have to go to our library, and we're going to select the newest version, which is not showing up here. So let's double check, make sure I saved it. I did not. Awesome. And I fixed my spelling. So we're going to save new version because you can't just select OK. Perfect. Back to resources, libraries, and there you can see new functionality. We save this. Great. And now when I call a library here, it's still not showing up. Let's just go ahead and refresh the page and see what happens. that. There we go. So now you can see our new function add value. Now let's go ahead and save it uh, and run. I and mean, we can keep this other function there. It's not really going to do anything. Oh, so actually real quick I just want to show you. Nothing here. Nothing up our sleeve. Uh, but you do have to accept permissions when you do this. So that is an important step. I don't know if you can see it on the video here, but I'm just going through the permission screen. Uh, I think you can. Get rid of that. Yep. Awesome. Running function. There we go. Let's have spreadsheets and hello world. So there you go. Uh, that's how you make a app script library. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks.